This video is sponsored by Skillshare. If you're watching this video at the time of posting, you know that protests against systemic racism and police brutality have spread through the United States like wildfire, having now reached all 50 states and gone international. These protests, in conjunction with the fact that we are in the midst of a global pandemic and the fact that we are headed towards an economic recession, have understandably had a negative impact on many people's mental health, leaving a lot of people looking for ways to either maintain or improve theirs. In fact, research shows that increased media exposure to collective crises like pandemics or large-scale political unrest causes both psychological and physiological stress. So whether you are stressed out from the current moment, have a history of mental health concerns, or are looking for new options for self-care, I thought it would be interesting to talk about how artificial intelligence algorithms are being used to diagnose and treat mental health concerns at all levels of severity, as well as talk about how AI might help you manage stress in your life. Before we get started, this is a disclaimer that I am not a medical professional, this is not medical advice, and none of the resources that I'm going to talk about are a substitute for seeing a medical professional if you need it. If you are concerned about your mental health, I would highly recommend reaching out to a doctor as soon as possible, and have included some resources in the description box for those who need it. If we look at all the medical fields that have begun to adopt artificial intelligence algorithms into their practice, mental health and psychiatry are probably at the bottom of that list in terms of progress. And it makes sense if you think about it. Unlike in physical medicine, where a lot of the things that we can measure are much more quantitative, a lot of mental health relies on qualitative variables. Additionally, how we describe them depends on both how the patient chooses to describe their feelings, as well as how the provider interprets them. For example, someone experiencing depression may not describe themselves as feeling sad, but as feeling unenergetic or unmotivated. In some cases, we do have quantitative diagnostic tools like imaging, but those aren't always conclusive. So if we don't have a gold standard for diagnostics, or in AI terms, if our data doesn't necessarily have a label, how can we apply artificial intelligence to solve this problem? Well, it turns out that research has shown that AI algorithms might still be useful in diagnosing conditions, predicting treatment responses, and as a supplement to ongoing mental health treatment plans. Starting with diagnostics, there have been several studies that have looked to apply AI to the challenge of diagnosing anything from depression to schizophrenia to ADHD. Depression tends to be the most popular disorder to approach. Some studies focus on social media information using natural language processing to extract emotions from text. In fact, a study from Harvard and the University of Vermont successfully analyzed Instagram photos of just over 150 people to identify markers of depression with similar accuracies to healthcare professionals. Other approaches have been more focused on brain imaging, as there are some mental health conditions that have neural signatures. And more recent research has focused on using biometric signals from something like a smartwatch or a Fitbit to predict whether or not someone is experiencing depression, anxiety, or something else. A study from the MIT Media Lab leveraged devices like this for depression by analyzing skin conductivity, sleep, motion, and messages sent and received by a user. They found that poor mental health was associated with less motion, irregular sleep, fewer incoming messages, and interestingly, a significant difference in skin conductivity between each wrist. Another area where researchers are looking to apply AI algorithms is predicting how a patient will respond to a particular treatment plan. In fact, this research is not specific to mental health. Researchers are looking to use AI algorithms to determine what treatments will be most effective for what patients for many other medical fields, including cancer. For some treatments, mental health or otherwise, we know that some patients take very well to them and some don't, but we may not understand why. Therefore, researchers are aiming to use AI algorithms to predict which patients will respond well to rich treatments, which treatments will work well for a specific patient, and to help research understand what characteristics differ between patient populations that respond well and patient populations that don't, so that we can better understand the biology behind why that is. Finally, AI might be used as a supplement to a mental health treatment plan. The two most popular approaches I've seen for this are AI chatbots and predictive algorithms that aim to identify when someone might go into a mental health crisis. In the former case, researchers are looking to use chatbots for patients who are undergoing long-term treatment plans, or for those who may have unreliable access to healthcare. For these patients, it may be important to check in on a frequent and regular basis, but that may not be logistically possible either due to scheduling issues or due to the high emotional intensity of in-person visits. In the latter case, people who are likely to experience mental health crisis might show symptoms in the days leading up to it that would allow for intervention. So researchers are looking to use AI algorithms to predict these crises days before they happen so that a medical professional can reach out. Of course, there are several caveats to most of this research, namely that we cannot extrapolate the results to the wider population. 
People experience mental health differently, so a diagnostic tool that works on one person's anxiety might not work on someone else's. There are also ethical and privacy considerations to take into account when it comes to these systems. Depending on how they're deployed, they may or may not be regulated under HIPAA, and many of the apps that are currently publicly available have not been validated in any clinical or academic studies. In other words, we don't know if these systems are protecting your data, and we also don't know if they actually work or worse, cause harm. This is especially a large concern as it comes to bias, as there are certain conditions that are underdiagnosed in certain populations. So we should look forward to more research on this front, but I wouldn't expect to walk into your doctor's office tomorrow and be diagnosed by an algorithm. So we've talked about all these studies, but if you're looking for something that you can use from home, this probably doesn't help you. What about options that are available to the general public? Well, as I mentioned earlier, there are a ton of publicly available apps that you can download, and I'm going to mention two that have been designed and validated by medical professionals. First, we have Youper, an app that allows users to have short conversations with a chatbot for self-help and self-care, and uses AI to monitor and, in theory, improve your mental health. Youper was co-founded by Dr. Jose Hamilton, a psychiatrist from San Francisco. In an interview with TechCrunch, Dr. Hamilton said that he created the app to lower the barrier of entry for people worried about the stigma of seeking professional treatment by making them more comfortable talking about their mental health. In this case, the AI is both the chatbot that you can use to talk about your concerns, as well as their personalized recommendation system that offers different techniques that you might try to relieve your stress. The app uses anonymized user data to improve both the chatbot and its recommendations, but otherwise does not share or sell your data in any way. I actually used Uber before I started seeing a therapist and found it to be helpful, although I likely undermined some of the effectiveness by not checking in on a regular basis. I think it might be helpful for someone who is anxious about seeing a medical professional or just doesn't know if they need to and is interested in tracking the trends in their mental health over time, but I would recommend reaching out to a medical professional to interpret those trends. Personally, some of the trends I saw were related to my then undiagnosed ADHD, so I wasn't really able to understand the trends without help. Second, we have TESS, a mental health chatbot that can provide emotional support and coach people through mental health recovery programs. This one's particularly interesting for me as it's been validated in several academic studies as well as several clinical trials. For depression, anxiety, and emotional support, reducing symptoms of depression by 28% and anxiety by 18%. It's also not an app, it's a phone number that you can just send texts to from any device that can send texts, so you don't have to worry about device compatibility. The platform can refer you to a human counselor 24-7 if you feel the need to talk to a person. And the content that the chatbot is trained on is developed by licensed therapists with experience with depression and anxiety. It's important to note that you can't buy this as an individual. You either have to get it through your health insurance, your life insurance, or your local government. So if you're interested in it, I'd recommend to reaching out to any of those parties to see if they can give you access. So can AI improve your mental health? The research says that it's promising, but as with any medical topic, you should talk to your doctor before you try anything. Some of these apps may be useful for people who are anxious about seeking professional help or for those who may not have access to professional help at the moment, but the research so far says they are best used as one element of a mental health treatment plan that has been designed by a medical professional. It's also important to note that, especially right now, you shouldn't consider AI to be the end-all be-all of mental health resources that you might have access to. Many, many studies have showed that having hobbies can also considerably improve your mental health. Whether it means picking up a book, going for a run, or making art, hobbies can lift your spirits and re-energize you during or after a stressful period. Personally, one of my hobbies is weightlifting, and every time I finish a workout, I feel refreshed, more relaxed, and less stressed. If you're looking to pick up a new hobby, drawing, writing, and journaling classes can be a great way to reduce stress, practice mindfulness, and feel connected to one another. And if you don't know where to start on your creative journey, you should check out Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community for creatives where millions come together to take the next step in their creative journey for less than $10 a month. They offer thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people on topics including illustration, design, photography, video, freelancing, and more. Personally, I've been checking out their iPhone filmmaking course as I've reached the point where my cell phone has a better camera than my actual YouTube camera, so I'm trying to learn to use it properly to make better videos. If you're interested, the first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link in the description will get a two-month free trial of premium membership so you can explore your creativity. Otherwise, if you like this video, you can let me know by smashing the like button down below and subscribing to my channel over here. You can also check out other videos that I've done on medicine and AI up here. If you'd like to follow my PhD journey, you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram, and I will see you guys next Friday. Bye!